Good morning and a very warm welcome to our time of worship together on Sunday the 14th of June from St John's Church in Weymouth. Wherever you're joining us from, you're really welcome this morning. Hope that you're all doing okay. We continue now to look at the book of Acts and this morning we'll be thinking about what it means that Acts is a continuation of the ministry of Jesus. But more on that in just a few moments time. God invites us to draw near to him, to worship him. So let me pray before we sing together. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for the, your blessings in our lives. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your goodness. We want to lift our voices and praise your name and worship you together now. Amen. He's coming on the clouds, kings and kingdoms will bow down. And every shame will break, as broken hearts declare His praise. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power. And fighting our battles, every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains, every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. So open up the gates, make way before the King of Kings. Our God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power. And fighting our battles, every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains, every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? 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 Who can stop the Lord? God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. Bible says that if we pretend there's nothing wrong in our lives then we're just fooling ourselves but if we confess 
our sins, those things that are wrong, then God is faithful and he's just and he will forgive us our sins. And so with great confidence in God's goodness, we're going to take a moment to confess our sins to him this morning. Lord God, we are sorry for those things which are wrong in our lives, for those times when we ignore you, we live as if we don't know you, we go against the things that you call us to do, times when we hurt each other, times when we hurt you. Lord, we ask for your forgiveness this morning. We thank you that you promise to move our sins as far as the east is from the west. And so, Lord, we thankfully receive your grace and your forgiveness this morning and we give you thanks amen and so let's continue together in worship mindful of all that god has done for us befriended Befriended by the King above all kings Surrendered Surrendered to the friend above all friends Invited Invited deep into this mystery Delighted, delighted by the wonders I have seen. This will be my story. This will be my song. You'll always be my saviour. Jesus, you will always have my heart. Astounded, astounded that your gospel beckoned me Surrounded, surrounded but I've never been so free This will be my story This will be my song You'll always be my saviour, Jesus, you will always have my heart. Determined, determined now to live this life for you. You're so worthy, my greatest gift would be the least your due. This will be my story This will be my song You'll always be my saviour Jesus, you will always have my heart And this is my story This is my song Praising my Saviour all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Saviour all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Saviour all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Saviour all the day long. 
This will be my story. This will be my song. You'll always be my savior. Jesus, you will always have my heart. 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 Amen. Oh, God is so good. We're going to be thinking about the book of Acts over the next few weeks. We're going to kick that off in just a moment. First of all, let's hear a short Bible reading. Today's reading is from Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 to 20. The Great Commission. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. This is the word of the Lord. Question for any of you film fans out there. Um, what's your favourite film? If you're in the house with someone else, why don't you just turn to them and tell them, what's your, what's your favourite film of all time? Maybe that's a question you can answer really easily. Maybe there are too many to choose from. Second question is, what's the best sequel of all time? Sequels are notoriously rarely as good as the original, but sometimes there are some, there are some decent surprises out there. You know, we're going to be thinking about the book of Acts over these next few weeks. And, you know, Acts is a sequel. It's a sequel because it was written by Luke, the same Luke who wrote Luke's Gospel. Now, when we flick through our Bibles, we get to Luke's Gospel, it finishes, and then we read John's Gospel, and then we get to Acts. And so, in a way, Luke and Acts kind of feel broken up for us. But actually, Luke intended them to be a pair. Luke was writing his Gospel in order to set out an orderly account for people of the ministry of Jesus. And then Acts is a continuation. He's just continuing the story, albeit in two parts. It is a sequel. So what that means is that everything we see happening in the book of Acts is just a continuation of what we've seen happening in the gospel. There's not really intended to be a significant break between the two things. The break is that Jesus ascends to heaven and then pours out his Holy Spirit, which is what we've celebrated in recent weeks. Apart from that, the stories are meant to be seamless. So Acts is a sequel to the gospel. It's meant to be a continuation of the ministry of Jesus, the work that Jesus started. There's a challenge for us right away. Well, I think it's a challenge anyway. You can see I'm kind of walking around the grounds of, of the church today. Uh, there's the church behind me. That's the, the back door. Hope House behind me there. This wonderful building that's been purchased and being developed into a youth centre, a centre for children and for families. You can see that a fair bit of groundwork has been going on in recent weeks, which we're very thankful for. And we're grateful for our building and for our grounds and we want to use them well to honour God. But that idea of Acts being a sequel, the work of the early church just being a continuation of the work of Jesus, poses a really important question for us as we contemplate the future and as we think about what's coming next for us as a church. And the question is really quite simple. Does our ministry and our mission, the stuff we do, feel like it's just a continuation of Jesus's ministry, albeit 2,000 years later in a different context and in a different time? Put even more simply, 
Are we doing the things that we saw Jesus doing in the Gospels? That's all the book of Acts is. They're just continuing what Jesus has started. So let me just ask us a few questions. And I say us because they're questions for me and they're questions for you. Jesus came because God so loved the world. That's what Jesus said to Nicodemus that night when they were, they were talking. Jesus said, God so loved the world that he sent his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. So what that means is that the whole of Jesus's ministry is motivated by love. Here's a question for us. Is that our motivation? Is what we do motivated primarily by our love for this world, our love for this community that you're getting a glimpse of in the background today? It's a good question. Jesus came and he spoke about the kingdom of God. He was a teacher. People called him rabbi. He talked about God. He talked about the kingdom of God. He then called his disciples the original followers and by extension you and me to go into all the world and teach and to baptize to make disciples does it look like that's what we're doing as a church are we teaching people about God and about the kingdom of God Jesus also came and he called people to repent to turn back to God he called out all that was wrong in the world do we have a prophetic voice in our community? Are we prepared? Are we bold enough to challenge the things that are wrong in the world around us, to speak prophetically into our community? Jesus drew people in from the edges. He spent time listening to the people that no one else would listen to. He went and ate as a guest of so-called sinners. Jesus drew people in from the edges. He loved the unlovable. He restored hope to people who were broken. Are we outward focused in that same way? Are we as prepared to go to the margins to be with those people who no one else wants to be with, just like Jesus did? Jesus healed people, empowered by the spirit, the same spirit that's given to us today. He healed people. He delivered people. There was a supernatural nature to his ministry. Where are those things in the life of our church, I wonder? And Jesus knew what it was to draw people to himself. And I know for our church, evangelism could do with being a higher priority than it is at the moment. So I've not answered any of those questions, I've just asked them and you might have answers bubbling away in your mind and they're questions which are not meant to be confrontational particularly or even to be personal, they're just questions that we should always ask of ourselves as a church and any church should ask. Are we doing the things that Jesus did? Is our ministry a continuation of his? But you know as I've kind of thought about what the answers to those questions are for me, the answer to nearly all of them is yes but and so the answer is yes to lots of those questions we're involved in lots of really really good kingdom stuff we are going to people who are on the edges we're seeking to care we're seeking to listen we're seeking to bring healing and wholeness to people we do talk about God and the kingdom and so it's a big yes to lots of those things. And thank you to you, the church, for all that you do to seek to continue the ministry of Jesus in this community. And there's lots more to come. Loads to celebrate, loads to give thanks for, loads to say thank you to God for about what he's doing amongst us. But for me, the answer is yes, but. And I don't know what the buts might be for you. You can maybe add your own yes to those questions but we could do more yes to those questions but maybe not as deeply as we could be yes to those questions but actually it's really quite hard work and we don't always have the energy 
yes to those questions, but actually can we? Are we good enough to do those things? Yes to those questions, but we don't really understand how to do it. Or yes to those questions, but what if it's not well received? What if it's not popular? Not What if not everyone in the church agrees that that's what we should be doing? You know, you can add your own but. Yes, I want to do the things that Jesus did, but dot, dot, dot. And you'll have your own reason why sometimes it might be a challenge. So you can add your own but, but don't let your but get in the way of what God wants to do. And so when we look at the book of Acts, which we'll do in the next few weeks, and, you know, we've not even really got started yet. I felt that this week I just wanted to think about it as a continuation of Jesus's ministry and to think about what that might mean for us. But as we look at the book of Acts, what we'll realise is that it's a continuation of Jesus's ministry because it is Jesus's ministry. It's not that Jesus did it and then said over to you. It's that Jesus continues to work. The only difference being it's now by his spirit. He's not physically present as he was in the Gospels. It's now by his spirit that he seeks to be at work in our lives and in our community. So it carries on because Jesus carries on. And so the question isn't really, can we do it? But can we let Jesus come and do it amongst us? Now, that's a question that excites me and challenges me. We don't know what is around the corner next for the church at the moment. We're, we're still isolated, we're still in lockdown, and it feels right that we're still in that place and God is using it to bless us, to teach us, to change us. We don't want to rush back too soon um, just because we're in a hurry. We don't want to put anyone's well-being at risk. But you know, there is a new day coming for the church. It'll involve that building that you can see behind me. It'll involve this much builder big, big building that you can see here. It'll involve the park church centre. It'll involve the school. It will involve the college. It will involve being about on the streets. But you know, whatever it is that God calls us to do, we want it to be a continuation of the ministry of Jesus in the power of the Holy Spirit. We can't do it on our own. That's why the disciples had to wait for the day of Pentecost. And so this is a great time to be saying, okay, God, we want to do the things that you call us to do. So please fill us with your spirit so that we can do it. So as I continue to walk, let's pray exactly that. Lord, fill us with your spirit. Lord, we thank you for all that has taken place in this community, in this church, around this church, through this church, because of this church. But Lord, we look forward to a bright future of more. Lord, we want to say yes to doing the things that you did, even when it pushes us out of our comfort zones, even when it might feel awkward and difficult and new and challenging. We want what we do here in this little corner of your world, in this little part of Weymouth, to be an, a, a continuation of what you started all those years ago. We want to make space for you to work. And we pray, Lord, that you'd fill us with your spirit, empower us, to do those things and we pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well thanks for joining me on this little walk and talk. I'm feeling just a bit dizzy, hope that you're not feeling too dizzy as well. But actually before we sing a final song together we are going to be led in prayer. So let's pray together. Hear us as we pray. Lord we thank you for all you have done for us. We thank you, Sovereign Lord, for your life, death and resurrection. We thank you for your promise to be with us always, and may we hold on to that promise when at times we may not feel your presence. Help us, dear Lord, to live a life worthy of your, our calling. Father, we pray for the world, for all those suffering from the coronavirus, for your healing touch, and for those who have lost loved ones, for your comforting arms to be around them. We pray too for all the medical and care staff and thank them for their commitment. Lord, we are made in your image and pray for harmony among all people and an end to the racism that is still prevalent in parts of society. We also pray for an end to the violence that is accompanying the demonstrations. Lord, we pray for the church for Justin Welby and those in authority, 
for wisdom and discernment. Strengthen your church by the power of the Holy Spirit, that we may all be worthy disciples. Grant us the right words to say, that we may lead others to you, and may you always be the centre of our praise and trust. We bring before you the leaders of all nations. Lord, grant them wisdom, humility and compassion. We pray for our own government for honesty and integrity. For the people of this town, we pray for your blessing upon them. Open their eyes and ears to your word and aid them in their searching. For our schools, pupils and staff, for reassurance and guidance as they start back to school. Lord, we pray for the suffering in the world and in our, in our own circle of friends and family, especially those in our church family. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come. Your, your will be done, done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. bread. Forgive, Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. We come to a final song which we're going to sing together as an act of prayer, an act of worship, as we go into the rest of the day. So let's worship God now. Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you How oh, we live for you Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one that could ever say Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you, oh, we live for you Holy, there is no one like you There is none beside you Open up my eyes in wonder Fill me who you are And fill me with your heart And lead me in your love To those around me Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one that could ever save Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you, oh, we live for you Holy, there is no one like you There is none beside you Open up my eyes in wonder Show me who you are And fill me with your heart And lead me in your love To those around me Upon your love It is a firm foundation I will put my trust In you alone And I will not be shaken I will build 
build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. I will put my trust in you alone, and I will not be shaken. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. It is a firm foundation. I will put my trust in you alone, and I will not be shaken. I will put my trust upon your love. It is a firm foundation. I will put my trust in you alone, and I will not be shaken. Lord God, thank you for our time together. Thank you for the presence of your spirit. Thank you for each other. And may we each know the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as we go from here into the rest of the day. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.